Hi everyone, Jackie here with Enjoying Life's Journey. Welcome back to my channel. If you're not familiar with my channel, I talk about goal setting, personal finance, and a little bit about our minimalist lifestyle. Today I wanted to do something a little different here on my channel and I'm actually going to share with you my self-employment budget. I did have a few people who were curious about how I budget out my money, what are we able to put as a business expense and things like that. So real quick, just so you know, I have a few different things that I work on that I consider basically self-employed or um, also a business owner. The form that you see here is a basically a, the template that I use for our personal home budget and now I also use it for my, my self-employment budget. Uh, also, I have different categories and I'll go over those in a minute and I have different percents that I split them up and those are based off of the book Profit First. I highly recommend reading that book if you are self-employed, if you're a business owner, something like that because it, it helps you to get your business finances under control and to actually enjoy some of the money. So I know I've owned a dance studio in the past, I had it for three years and I never paid myself out of that studio. I only I paid my teachers, I kept the doors open, I kept the lights on, uh, and that was about it. I never paid myself, so I highly recommend you, you read Profit First because you're actually going to get a paycheck from your business and you're going to you know, reap what you're sowing and it's going to make you stick with it longer that way. So I'll leave that book down below for you. What types of income sources do I have? A lot of you know that I make videos on YouTube. It's not a huge amount. It's not that I don't do it full time. I'm not making a living off of it. It's a cool little hobby kind of thing, but I do get paid. So the first thing here is Google AdSense. So this is the ads that you see on my YouTube videos. Now, if I had my website up and running, which I could put ads on that as well, and that's paid through Google. So Google ads with Google AdSense, you have to make a minimum of $100 before they will issue you a check or do your direct deposit. So a lot of times, you know, if you don't make $100 in that month, say you made $90 in that month, you're not going to get paid the following month. You'll it'll probably take you another month before you get paid. So that's what this one is here. Um, a second way that I make money is from Amazon affiliate. The links that you see in my description box, those are Amazon affiliate links. So I get a very small commission off of um, anything that you purchase using my links. With Amazon Affiliate, you have to make uh, $10 before you uh, get paid. And to be honest with you, I've only been, I only get paid maybe twice a year from Amazon, and it's you know anywhere from like $15 to $20. I'm not making a whole lot on there. I don't promote big products on there. As you guys see in my descriptions, they're usually books. So you know I might get some pennies if you guys purchase a book off, off of my link. Uh, the, the third one here I have is Travel Quest. This is my host agency. I am a travel agent. I That is a business. I actually have a business entity, a business license, a, you know, a business for specifically for that. But basically, anytime I sell travel, I get a commission from whoever the supplier is. So for instance, if I send a client on Royal Caribbean, I get paid from Royal Caribbean, but it goes to my host agency first, and then I get paid from them. So Travel Quest is my host agency. They send out paychecks um, every 10th of the month, and usually commissions are paid after your clients have traveled. So there's no um, rhyme or reason. It just depends on when I have clients traveling or not. Now here you're gonna see profit quarter bonus and operating expense hold. So this is money that's not income, but this is money that has been sitting in a savings account, one specifically for profit bonuses and one for operating for operating expenses. So when it's time to pay me my quarterly bonus, I bring that money over. And if, say, my income does not cover enough of my expenses after I divide up my money, then I sometimes have to bring money over from the savings for that. Uh, and then the last one here is one of the side hustles I just recently started, which is Instacart. So basically, the grocery shopping and delivering uh, groceries to people. Uh, so these are all the ways that I make money being self-employed or a business owner, okay? So all of this goes into one checking account. So and all of this stuff is set up as a direct deposit. So anytime I get paid, Google, we get paid around the 21st or the 22nd of the month. 
Amazon, I believe we get paid kind of at the end of the month. Travel Quest, I mentioned, we get paid on the 10th of the month. Instacart, we get paid every Friday. So what I do up here, just like my personal budget, I have every Friday up here. So for October, I'm looking to make $147.16 from Google. My profit quarterly bonus is $32.30. I'm going to talk about that here in a minute. Operating expenses, I'm actually going to have to bring over $22.54. And Instacart, I'm estimating $130.00. But this could change because I don't actually have my schedule for these weeks here. Uh, and this, I'm only scheduled, I'm scheduled for five hours on Sunday. That doesn't mean I'm going to be working all five hours. So I went ahead, underestimated, and I said I'll, I'll make about 30. So that's kind of what I've done here. Okay. All right. So now we're getting into our pay ourselves first category within the profit first way of budgeting out your money for self-employment. So the first one is your profit account. Profit first, you guys. So 5% of whatever you make goes into a savings account for your profit. Now this does not count these two right here. That's money that was already put aside previously. So I'm not counting 5% of that. It'd be 5% of the Google and 5% of the Instacart, which ends up being $13.82. Okay, So that goes into my profit account. Now you see here, these sections here, those are my accounts within my bank. So I can keep a running total of what's in there. Then every quarter you pay yourself half of what's in there as a bonus. This is not money to be put back into the business. This is money to go to you personally to enjoy. So before October, basically when September ended, we had about $64 in my profit account. So as you can see, I'm paying myself half of that. So I'm gonna pay me myself $32 and then $32 is staying in the profit account. So that can continue to grow. Ultimately, this profit account would grow at the same time, and it could eventually be your emergency fund or saving up for bigger upgrades that you might need in the future. And I'll talk about that when we get down to necessities. The second area of paying yourself first is your actual paycheck. So I pay myself half of whatever I make. So half of the Google, half of the Instacart, half of the Travel Quest, half of that. So for the month of October, I'm looking at paying myself $170.88. This gets transferred into my owner's checking account. And then you can decide when you're getting paid. You can say you get paid, you know, every Friday, which is basically what I do. Or you can say you get paid once a month or you get paid every other week, whatever you want to do. But basically every time money comes in, 50% of that goes into your owner pay account. Then when it's your payday, you pay yourself whatever's in that account. I hope that makes sense. So some of your incomes could be, you know, say you do private coaching or you do design work or something like that. So you could be getting paid totally random whenever your clients pay you. So, you know, how you're setting up this might be, it might look a little different, but you could basically just say, you know what, every Friday I'm gonna check in my income account. I'm gonna see what did I make this week and then plug it in and divide up your money. Um, that's what, you know, you could do, or with Profit First, it just recommends, like, I think it's two, two days out of the month that they go in and they kind of reconcile, they reconcile everything. Um, I just do it every Friday. My husband gets paid every Friday, so Instacart pays me every Friday, so it's easy for just every Friday to say, hey, I'm going to go in, I'm going to see what's come in the income account, and then I'm going to send it out on its way, okay? So that could be a little different. But basically what you do then for the owner's pay is, you know, you could, again, every Friday, you could say, okay, half of this is going into my owner's pay, but say you're not going to pay yourself every Friday. Say you're just going to pay yourself, you know, twice a month. Then you just pay yourself on that day, okay? I do all of this electronically, online banking, so I just move everything around. But this profit account, this is a savings account. My owner's account is a checking account, okay? Then we come down to our taxes. If you are self-employed, an independent contractor running a business, you are not going to have anyone paying your taxes for you. You're going to have to put that money aside for yourself. So 
the book recommends 15% goes away for taxes. Now, it, it could end up being less than 15% because you're going to have different things that you're going to be able to write off. So you're not going to um, have as much taxable income when things are said and done. But it's always good to at least put 15% aside. If you do end up having money left over, this is the area in which you would reinvest in things for the business if you have money left over after tax time. So for the month of October, I'm looking to put $41.57 into my tax account, which is currently at $158.73. So again, this just keeps going in there. This is in a savings account as well. So this just keeps going in there. And then after tax time, if I owe anything, then I will pay it out of there. If I don't owe anything, then I can reinvest it in the business where I can just let it sit there and grow for even something bigger. Think of it as your personal finance as well, right? If you want three to six months of emergency fund as in your personal finance, you want the same thing in your, your business accounts, okay? Now, last thing are our operating expenses. So again, what I do could be different from you, so you guys could have similar things, or you could have more, or you could have less, um, but this hopefully this will kind of give you guys some ideas of what is considered a operating expense for your self-employment, for your business, whatever that might be, things that you can write off. So the first one here for me is internet. That's a big one. I have two domain names that get renewed every year. I have one email address that I pay for. Um, Amazon seller. I used to sell books on Amazon. So when we would we would have to pay for shipping and if we sold a book, we had to pay for um, they kept a portion of that, things like that. I no longer am selling books. I basically let my inventory just sell out and go. So this expense pretty much could probably just go away. Um, education. Okay, if you need to educate yourself in anything related to your trade, your business, running a business, marketing, any of that stuff, it's going to be a tax write off. Giving, if you have any charitable uh, donations that are given through the business, through the business name, you can write that off. Office supplies, okay, so this could be your paper, your pens, your calendars, your planners, your printing ink, things like that. Your equipment, these are things that I have like cameras, computers, insulated bags for Instacart, things like that. Travel, another thing I need to update on here uh, is you know, gas, so because I'm driving for Instacart, so I'm going to add on here right now, gas. Um, phone, okay, my phone is $30 a month gas. So again, you could have some other things on here, specific uh, marketing expenses. If you have legal expenses, say you hire an accountant or something like that, you would put that in here, uh, things like things like that, okay? Uh, so these are just the very basic, these are the things that I have. Every single month I have internet, which is $66.73, and I have my phone, which is $30. These things change um, on a monthly basis. Uh, and now that I'm doing Instacart, then there will be gas expenses. If you watched, I did my first month review for Instacart. So last, uh, my first month I spent maybe $12 worth of gas. So far I haven't worked for October yet, so I'm not really sure what to budget for that uh, quite yet, but I will be moving stuff around. And then if everything's been paid, if, if anything that needs to be paid has been paid, everything else left would just go in my operating expense hold account, okay? So this, basically all of this money gets transferred into my operating expenses checking account, and then these get deducted as automatic withdrawals. And then again, I just put money over there. So as of right now, I still have $83.78 in that account. Um, and as you can see, if I need to use it for the next month up here at the top, I have some money in there um, kind of as a little bit of a buffer. So I don't have a whole lot going on, you know, with it, but I, I thought I would show you how I'm doing it. Now that I'm doing Instacart, I am bringing a little bit more in on a monthly basis. Um, also, I do have a commission check coming to me, I believe, in November. So that will be nice to see. Uh, I should have it, you know, hopefully I'll get paid, you know, the 10th of November. Uh, but basically that's what October looks like and then if you guys are familiar with my personal budget I normally down here is for the fun category so right now this is just blank so I really encourage you guys check out that book um, and if you're already using a template if you're already using my budget template you can easily turn it into one to use for your, your self-employment or your business uh, and then like I said basically right here so I'm getting paid you know $170.88 this shows me what I'm getting paid per week 
Uh, and real quick, I'll show you my personal budget for our family. You'll see it right here. Um, this is actually, I have 155 budgeted because I, I had adjusted some things on the business one that I had not adjusted yet on my personal budget. But basically, um, that just gets translated here. So what I just paid myself half of the business is now here in our personal budget. So you can kind of see how they work hand in hand with each other. That's how I budget out my self-employment income. If you guys have any questions, please leave them down below. As always, thanks for watching and I will see you soon. Bye!